Hi, welcome to Dev Central. My name is Jason, and this is our latest episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. And today we're going to talk about proxies. And so, what is a proxy? Well, proxy gets its origin in Middle English, and it's a legal term. It's a, actually a contraction of the word procuracy. And that origin is, or the, the meaning of the word, is actually to act on behalf of. And so, when you, when you put it in the context of web traffic or any other networking protocol, um, it's going to be a device, of, an electronic device, computer, whatever, that acts on behalf of other devices. And so let's get into what types of proxies we have, and we'll start with the half proxy. And so a couple different use cases for a half proxy. Uh, you'll have clients who will connect to a proxy, and then the proxy will establish a relationship back here with the servers, and then it will respond to the client with said uh, information. And then after that initial connection is set up, then the further traffic will just come straight through this proxy to the back end resources. And the proxy, is, you know, it may be handling port switching at layer four or whatever, but it's not really doing anything at that point. It's, it's really routing, uh, natting, whatever, but it's not, it's not doing any intelligence at that point. So that would be an, an, uh, a use case to where it's really just setting up a call and then, and then the client and the server does what it needs to do. Another example within half proxies is uh, the direct server return. So protocols like uh, streaming protocols, you have this initial setup going on here, but instead of coming through the proxy for the rest of the connection, then the server will just go, it'll bypass and come back and, actually, sorry, uh, it'll bypass and go straight to the client. And so, uh, like streaming protocols will do that. So you're not wasting the resources on your proxy uh, to do something that can be direct communication from server to client. And so that's a direct server return is a use case for half proxy. And then if we move on into full proxy, Full proxy sets up, and, and let's just focus on server side here. Full proxy will set up this gap in the middle. And so when you have a full proxy, clients talk to the proxy, and then the proxy in independent connections talks to the servers bidirectionally on both sides. So there is never any blending of connections from the client side to the server side. This proxy and this gap, you know, all the smarts of how it binds connections together happens here in this gap, but those connections are independent. And so what that gives you with the half proxy, it's mostly client side on the way in on a request, does what it needs to do. With full proxy, you can manipulate, inspect, do whatever you need to do both directions. Uh, so whether it's a request or a response, you can manipulate tra traffic on the client side request, the server side request, the server side response or the client side response. And so you get a, tr a lot more power with full proxy than in, in half proxy implementation. And so let's talk about the different ways Big IP plugs in for proxies. And so we'll start on the server side. And on the server side, you have what's called a reverse proxy. So if you've heard the term reverse proxy, that is on the server side of the connection. So you have clients, they come across the internet, they hit a reverse proxy sitting in front of application servers. And so what reverse proxies are good for is you know, traditional load balancing. And then you can plug in optimization, optimization, uh, server side caching, and then uh, security you can put in there. And so you can whitelist clients so that if uh, you know that there are certain IP spaces that, that are known acceptable, you can whitelist those. If you have known malicious sources out there in the internet, you can blacklist them so you can do it at an IP layer. But then you can also do it all the way up at layer seven with uh, any kind of like an HTTP request. You can throw an ASM policy on that. And so as it inspects that traffic, it sees some kind of a SQL injection or it sees a, a JavaScript inject uh, or a, um, 
uh, some kind of a, a, a prompt or something that, that is not native to your application shouldn't be there, uh, you, can, you can knock that out and block it. And so that's a reverse proxy. Now let's flip this over to the client side. And we'll just flop that over here. Big IP, if you didn't know, can also be a, a, a forward proxy. And so forward proxy. And the forward proxy is going to be on the client side of, of connections. And so your clients connect to your big IP or something like a blue coat and, and, uh, and then the proxy acts on behalf of the clients out to the world. And so well, what is that good for? Well, also caching. So you can cache server side and you can also cache client side. So it, you know, it, it's not as big a deal anymore because bandwidth is so cheap, but it used to be in the day if you only had a T1 and you had you know, 100 users and they all wanted to go out to ESPN.com and pull down videos of, of NFL action or any other kind of uh, sporting event or you, know, you wanted to go out to YouTube in, in its early heyday. Um, caching all of that content locally prevents you from having to use your WAN pipe. So uh, client-side caching is one thing. Uh, filtering is another big one. And so you as an organization, you don't want your, your uh, people that you're paying good money to wasting their day on YouTube or wasting their day uh, on Facebook or anything. So if you, if you don't want them on those, uh, those sites, you can block them and keep them from uh, getting out to those sites. But you can also filter out malicious stuff. And then also uh, privacy. Well, my pen's having problems here. All right, or I'm just having problems. So privacy or anonymity, you can uh, use things to, to mask your internal site. Uh, you can use a forward proxy. Uh, one uh, that's kind of an anonymous proxy out there is uh, the Tor network. But there's other services layer, and if you have, you know, a lot of these services can be built in. Of course, security as well. We didn't put that, but security is a big one on both sides, uh, whether it's a forward proxy or a reverse proxy. Um, but if you uh, have any other services, like you have uh, um, uh, content of some kind that you want to replace as it comes in to your clients, you could uh, pass off to an ICAP server. But if you just have a services layer here, anything from client to server uh, out in the internet, you can manipulate that outbound, you can manipulate it inbound, you can handle that locally on your platform, or you can hand it off to third-party services. All of that is possible on your Ford proxy. So hopefully this has been a, a good uh, overall uh, or an overview of what proxies are and what they can do for you. Uh, come back next time and we'll actually talk about uh, SSL-specific proxies with uh, proxy, proxy SSL and the SSL Ford proxy.